Hey, this is Tyler from SpectraCal. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to run the 3D LUT AutoCal on the 2018 LG C8 OLED model. We're going to be using the VideoForge Pro pattern generator, the C6 HDR 2000 as the meter, and a 55-inch C8 LG OLED 2018. I've already opened our LG SDR calibration workflow. I'm going to step through the workflow and try to give as a detailed explanation of this process as possible. So now we're going to connect to the hardware. So now I'm going to go to find meter. And since I have a C6, I'm going to leave the top thing checked and hit search. If you have another meter, say a Klein K10 or a CR or a photo research or something like that, then you would select it from here. So I'm going to hit search and I'm going to make sure we have our correct meter profile selected. So you can do that actually in here. And we actually have a new one for the 2018 LG OLED panels. And it actually applies to the Panasonic and Sony and Flanders Scientific models as well, because they all use the 2018 LG display OLED panel. So next is our pattern generator. So I'm going to go to Find Source, Video Forge Pro. And on this particular computer, we're actually connected to COM9. I'm going to hit Connect. And then when we actually connect successfully to the pattern generator, we show the grayscale bars if that pattern generator supports it. So you get some feedback that it's actually connected properly. So next we're going to select LG TV, find TV. Now I've actually connected the laptop with an ethernet cable directly to the TV. Then both the TV and the laptop will assign itself the 169 private IP address range. I've done this just because we're in a, in a back room that doesn't have the greatest Wi-Fi signal. It has nothing to do with the Wi-Fi reliability of the TV. Actually, most of our engineering work on the TV was done with a Wi-Fi connection. So you should have no problem with a Wi-Fi connection. I've retrieved from the TV's menu system the IP address of the TV, which is right here. Now, one thing to be aware of is when we select LG as a manufacturer here, there's three options. And the default, because of alphanumeric sorting, is the Alpha 7 B8 model. Make sure if you have a C8, E8, G8, or W8, you don't have the B8 selected or else it will try to upload a 17 cube 3D LUT into a slot that's expecting a 33 cube 3D LUT. So just make sure you have correct model for which TV you're working on. So now I'm gonna hit connect. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna pop up an eight digit pin code on the TV. So in this case, it's 5566-8308. And this pin is actually unique for each session. So it's a security feature. It's kind of like two factor authentication. Okay, we're now connected, so we're going to go on to the next step. So we do recommend a 10% pattern window on the OLED models, and that's 10% area of the screen. Next step is set up our targets. So for this particular setup, we're going to calibrate to D65. If you would like to enter your own custom white point, you would enter custom here and then enter the XY values right here. So if you've done a perceptual match to say a reference broadcast monitor, or if it's just for your TV, we recommend D65. Now on the OLEDs, we do recommend setting the gamma formula to power 2.4. If you're doing one of the super UHD LCD models, you would use BT1886. And if you're targeting a day mode, then you would most likely want to use a different gamma, say power 2.2 or 2.0. Next step is to enable our full field pattern insertion. Now this defeats the LG's burn-in protection algorithm so it doesn't affect our test patterns when we're calibrating. So essentially what, what goes on is every 30 seconds, for 5 seconds, we insert a 15% full field uh, and that resets the algorithm. For our Delta E formula for the AutoCal threshold, we recommend Delta E 2000 J and D A B. You can use Delta ICTCP if you would like. I personally use that, but just be aware that if your charts are all set to Delta E 2000, you would probably want to set this to J and D A B, or else you'll have larger errors near white, or Delta E 2000 will say you have larger errors near white when Delta ICTCP does not say that those are large errors. If you want to use ICTCP, I recommend changing your Delta E charts as well. Now we're going to do our pre-calibration view. On this TV, I have it set up to the Technicolor Expert mode is our pre-calibration mode. So I'm going to do a read series here and it's going to read the grayscale and the color gamut. Oh, 
Okay, so this is the factory Technicolor expert mode in SDR. That will be populated onto a report if you choose to use a report if you're doing this professionally. The home report only shows the post calibration result. You have to have a professional version of CalMan to show the before and after for your customers. So now we're going to pick up which picture mode we want to do. So I'm going to select Technicolor mode. Now we're going to hit this full DDC reset button. And what it's going to do right now is wipe out the factory calibration for this picture mode. It's going to upload a Unity 1, 1D and 3D lookup table. After that, we will have a reading of just the panel's native performance, which would be close to a 10,000K white point and close to 2.2 gamma and full native color gamut, so which is close to P3. We go on to the next one. Now we're going to set our peak luminance. Be cognizant of this particular area. We want to get about 15% higher than our target because when we take out some of that blue to hit our target white point, we lose luminance. So just based on my testing, I'll do a read continuous. If we're targeting 100 nits or candelas per meter squared, we want to start out around 25 on OLED light and then I might knock it down until this is around 16 or 17. 116 or 17 and then at, at the end of the calibration process you'll probably be right at 100 nits. So I'm going to hit stop. Next step is the grayscale autocal. Let me talk a little bit about these options we give you because it's kind of overwhelming. The default is pretty much our recommended default. We've done extensive testing on the right amount of points. Since we have a full 1D lookup table that has 1024 different steps of grayscale adjustment, Obviously, we're not going to read every single one of those. That gives us the flexibility to move them and position the measurement points that we actually read and adjust to very specific areas, and then we interpolate in between those areas. So in the case of the 16 to 235, and it will read all the way down to 2.3%. If you have a pattern generator that does not support super white, so it doesn't support anything over 235, which could be DaVinci Resolve or something like Mobile Forge. In some cases, depending on which device Mobile Forge is running on, if you, if you cannot read over 235, then you need to select one of the ones that only goes up to 235, and then we will interpolate above that. The rolling autocal versus regular, I prefer the regular. The, what the rolling does is after it's done its first pass through, it will go through and in groups of three, it will measure the steps all the way down and optimize the three that are right next to each other in groups. So if there's any interplay between them, it will kind of smooth it out. It takes longer, but it does kind of fine tune stuff. Personally, I don't use it, but we wanted to give you guys the flexibility to use it. Now, a lot of people have asked me what this dark detail is. So the dark detail ones is for people that have really high-end measurement devices like the Klein K10, the CR100 from Colorimetry Research, something like the Konica Minolta CA310, or this new CA410, where they can read near black very, very accurately and quickly. So it actually does a lot more steps near black and it also goes all the way down to 2%. So if you do have one of those meters and you have a little bit extra time, you will get, in my opinion, a slightly better result coming out of black. We're using the C6, so we're gonna select the default 26 points, 16 to 255. You can change your Delta E target. You can even set it to zero and it will just go and try each combination on each step until it gets the absolute lowest one it does take much longer but you know if you're calibrating your own tv and you don't care how long it takes you could just set this to zero zero and it will just keep grinding at each point until it finds the absolute lowest possible it will make a little bit prettier charts but the results we're getting with these defaults are in a lot of times not really perceptible to humans i just recommend to leave it at 0.5 and it will actually go lower but in some cases at the very bottom, you might get a tiny bit more accuracy if, if you set your Delta E target all the way to like 0 0.01 or something crazy low. It's going to take about five minutes to run the grayscale. So in this tutorial, we'll probably just speed up the video so you don't have to sit here for five minutes twiddling your thumbs. So the results are in. It took a 12 minutes. The reason it took longer than I expected is because I forgot to tell you guys, I usually do this when I'm calibrating OLED models of TVs and broadcast monitors, is I enable the C6's low light handler and I set it to 5.0 fixed reading. So anything below one nit of brightness will take a five second reading to make sure it gets the most accurate reading as possible. So 
it essentially doubled the, the calibration time. So one thing I did want to comment on is for people that have panels that crush black out of the factory worse than others, you might have luminance results that are under luminance down here. This one isn't off, but you would see essentially the Y value here would be much lower than the target Y. And the AutoCal doesn't fix that, but you can manually tweak it afterwards. So it's not like you have to return the panel. So if you go to DDC controls here, you can actually do a, a read continuous at 84 and then manually tweak these RGB values up until you hit it. What I usually do is if it's barely below, I'll use green and do one click. And then if it has to move quite far, then I would move red, green, blue all together up at that point. Just be cognizant of that you have the same one here as down here. So next is rechecking our luminance after we've done our grayscale autocal right at about 100. So now we're going to do our 3D LUT. So now we have some options. So we can do our matrix LUT, which reads red, green, and blue, and white, and calculates the whole 3D LUT. And the reason that works is we've already done the grayscale, white point, and gamma curve with the 1D LUT. The matrix LUT gets, in my opinion, great results for what you're actually measuring. So you can get slightly better results with the lightning LUT, and I'll show you that as well. And then if you want essentially Hollywood level accuracy, people usually do 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 patches. But be aware you trade off some accuracy for a little bit more artifacts as far as like banding and stuff. I'm gonna run the matrix LUT. So I'm gonna go down here, select matrix LUT, hit okay. It will read red, green, and blue and calculate our 3D LUT. If after you run this, you go do your post calibration measurements, if their color gamut is way oversaturated, that means you ran into the bug that is in the TV where after we've uploaded the 3D lookup table, it's not applying it to the video pipeline. LG is working on a solution for this. It doesn't happen every time. It's actually pretty rare, but it does happen sometimes. To be clear, it's not something that you have to worry about like a week later it happening when the TV boots up or something. It only happens right after we load the LUT file initially. And the solution is is to get it applied is you pull the power out of the wall and let the TV do an actual full hard reboot and then as soon as it boots back up it will be applied so we have properly loaded it into the TV it's just not being applied to the image pipeline I just wanted to be aware of that so you didn't start pulling out your hair if you saw that behavior so we've done our matrix LUT now we're gonna do our post calibration measurements what I've done here is on history 2 I've already created a lightning LUT and then I deleted it. So this is the results of the lightning LUT, and then on history one, I'm going to measure the results of our matrix LUT and show you the comparison results. It actually looks like we ran into this bug, so this is as much as that I wouldn't like it to happen. We can actually see what it looks like when this bug happens. You can see everything is oversaturated. Everything is too wide here. So I'm gonna quickly hit stop. I'm gonna disconnect from the TV because we've already done our calibration for this picture mode. I'm gonna disconnect from the TV and then power cycle the TV really quick. Okay, we power cycled the TV. I'm just gonna read red first because that's gonna tell me 100% right now if it's, if it's in there or not. Okay, so it's in the right box now. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a read series again with our 3D LUT actually applied to the image pipeline. And like I mentioned before, you don't have to worry about this happening while you're watching TV or something. It seems to only happen when you go to load it immediately afterward. Uh, we have post-production facilities all over Hollywood that are using this, and none of them have reported any problems after it's been loaded and applied. They've never came in one morning and had it in its native color gamut mode. So rest assured that that won't happen. Okay, so we can see our average delta E is 1.3, max is 3.1. And then with our lightning LUT, we're getting delta of max of 2 and an average of 0.6. So the lightning LUT, instead of just reading 4 or 5 readings, we're actually measuring 101 different patches. Okay, now we're going to verify our saturation sweeps. So as you can see, our lightning LUT here, we have an average delta of 0.45. All of the targets are in their boxes. Now I'm going to read and show you what the matrix LUT does. Reads white, then black. Black takes 5 seconds. That's why the, for the delay. Okay, so we can see our average delta E is 0.65, and then our lightning LUT was 0.45, so you can see the difference. So next thing would be to do our post-calibration view, and this is what we would have populated onto the report, side by side with our pre-calibration, if you are running a professional version of CalMAN. If you're running a home version, the report will only have the post-calibration result. Okay, 
Okay, calibration complete. If we wanted to do an additional picture mode for a day mode, we could go here, and then we would select our additional picture mode from the dropdown. Remember, I disconnected from the TV to do the reboot, but then you would select the separate drop-down uh, target for whatever additional picture modes you were gonna do. And then you would complete the rest of the process. Now, if you wanna generate that report, you wanna generate the report first before you do an additional picture mode. Thanks for watching our video, and we're also gonna be doing an HDR10 and Dolby Vision tutorial for the 2018 LG OLED AutoCal process. Also, it applies to the Super UHD LCD models as well. If you have any questions, you can email our support, that's support at spectracal.com, or leave a comment on the video. So thank you for watching, and don't forget, subscribe to the channel.